Okay, uh, the next we come to the academic training session. So now let's welcome the first speaker, uh, Mr. Peter Hastel, uh, who is the Associate Dean of uh, Academic Programs and also Scheme Leader of uh, BA Scheme in Design and uh, Associate Professor in School of Design at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, Hong Kong. Uh, welcome, Peter. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I'm here to talk to you about undergraduate programs at our school and how we are preparing our design students for a digital future. Um, excuse me. Um, so why PolyU Design? We are a school established since 1964. We cover a wide range of different subjects and programs in design. We have 1,100 uh, 1, students we are a, a school that's number 20th in the world currently. We are a combination of East meets West, so we teach in a, a very Western way, but with an Eastern context. And we are located in a wonderful building right in the middle of Hong Kong, fantastic city that is ranked number five in the world design rankings. Our city is uh, currently going through a kind of creative and digital change transformation at the moment. And we are preparing our students for this future. As well, uh, over the past uh, 40 or 50 years, we have produced many outstanding alumni. Um, the most notable here for digital um, um, design is Raymond Hugh, who's an animator who's worked with uh, Pixar and Disney. But as you can see, the, there are many others that have had influence in some of the products we use, some of the designs we know, and some which have international reputation. As well, we have very notable professors working with us. So here is Professor Johan Horn. He produced a, a, a robot called Alice. Alice was designed to be a kind of electromechanical grandchild um, with the aim of relieving elderly people's loneliness. So they have somebody to talk to, interact with in a way that links digital design together with um, growing old in our communities. Specifically today, I want to talk about two main programs we have in the undergraduate program. The first is interactive media, which looks at how we interact with technology in a number of different ways, whether that's designing apps, whether that is uh, designing interactive systems and understanding human experience and how we interact with the digital world. Uh, and the second program is digital media, which focuses on developing content, digital content, which includes things such as animation, um, digital films and digital storyboarding or narrative appropriate for different kinds of digital platforms that we have. So let's go through a few examples of our students' work here. The first one is called Close FD by two students in 2020. And they had the idea of tagging their wardrobes so that you can actually mix and match. You end up with a whole kind of online wardrobe that you can run off your phone and then therefore you can select out your current wardrobe but as well you can swap clothes you can uh, perhaps sell your secondhand clothes or scan your body so that you know how big what sizes fit you and how you can mix your wardrobe with those things you see so they, they produced a very nice interactive system for this as well as uh, an animation to explain how this system works. The second one is called Kill Danny by three students um, in the digital media sector last uh, design last year, 2020. They produced an animation that uses some Hong Kong style um, films and Hong Kong style manga to make a very entertaining short animation film. You can see some examples of that here. <coughs> some of these things also won significant awards. As well as interactive media and digital media, we have several other programs. 
These include social design, advertising design, communication design, environment and interior design, and product design. As you can see, we cover quite a wide spectrum or range of different types of undergraduate programs. These also link to some of our graduate programs, as you can find out through our website. Let's go through a few of these examples. So the first one I want to talk about is called 100 Eager Tree Facts, based on um, this migratory bird. Um, and then this, within social design field, uh, this group, this student developed a series of information um, on egrets that would um, go on Hong Kong bus stops around the city. So it therefore links human activity, everyday activity with nature and so forth. Second example is from Advertising Design 2020, designed by four students. It's called Meatless Meat Relocation. What the idea of this one is that um, uh, meatless meat or vegan products should not be located in the meat section in supermarkets, but should actually be in the vegetarian vegetable section of supermarkets. So they developed a whole campaign that could actually highlight and promote this whole different change of attitude. Um, the third example is from communication design where this group of students looked at how we can redesign medical labels and health communication in order to uh, help the elderly people in our community to better understand what they should take, when they should take it, and how they should take this medicine, given that many um, levels of communication in this sector are not that clear. This is from 2017. Um, the uh, fourth example is called Slash Living. This is an environment and interior design project looking at how we can live in a much more flexible way, especially for younger people. This was a winner of a uh, student category of the IFI Awards 2020 and several others. Um, this proposed, uh, instead of everyone having one apartment, that there would be shared co-living opportunities for younger people who cannot afford to live in expensive apartments yet. Um, the fifth example is called ACID. This is designed for aging population when they use buses. So Henry, the, the product design student here, who won a, a very prestigious James Dyson Award in 2020, designed a, a foldable seating element that would uh, be placed on buses that could allow the formerly standing room to be used in temporary seating and then this would fold back up when it's not in use. Um, as well I would like to just take a minute of your time to go through some of the other uh, educational experiences from our program. So we run several other very interesting things that are quite unique in Hong Kong one of them is called co-op projects, where we team up in cross-disciplinary ways. In other words, you might have a product designer with a digital media design student uh, working with real clients on real briefs. Uh, occasionally, what, if the client really likes these projects, they may get realized uh, or licensed to develop further. Um, and in some cases, these things have resulted in, in actual products or actual th projects uh, being made in our city. As well, we offer internship, which um, helps students go out and get uh, real world experience within design practices all over Hong Kong and also internationally. So this Two particular aspects allow us to integrate very well with the industry, both uh, in Hong Kong and abroad. And as well, we offer many other things such as study trips, international lectures, series, and so on. So thank you very much for um, listening to my presentation for the undergraduate program. If you like more information on our program, please scan the QR code or log on to our website. If you have any other questions, please um, 
uh, put them on the chat here and then we will try to answer those as well. Please leave your email address so that we can contact you later. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Peter. So now we have uh, another speaker, uh, the last but not least, uh, who is uh, Mr. Sally Choi, uh, French Government uh, Excellence Scholarship Laureate and uh, alumni of uh, Eco des Goblin Animation France. Uh, let's welcome Sally. Um, thanks for inviting me to share my experience of study in France. Let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Sally Choi. I'm a normal girl who grew up with animation films and they inspired me to become an artist or an, a director who can spread happiness to the world by telling a story. I went to study creative media in City University of Hong Kong. During the study, I have chances to join different competitions and animation festivals. I have worked in different kinds of creative studios and tried different types of design jobs during my bachelor study. For example, I have worked in some animation shorts, feature film development, website, VR game, and theme park design at Walt Disney Imagineering. It was fun to see how we can use different medium to tell a story. Because of these experiences I got from the Hong Kong industry, I had the clear direction of becoming a concept artist, as I said. I also decided to study overseas to explore more possibility on animation and want to see how other people work in other countries. I believe there's something we can learn from the others and bring back to Hong Kong. Go Blanc's the School of Image at Paris is a school with a good reputation, less expensive and top animation school in Europe. The most important thing is the master's degree is in English. And I know the new bachelor classes this year will be in English too. European animation films are emerging right now and having a big influence in the world. They have a unique style and special way of telling a story. Therefore, in 2019, I applied Goblin and got accepted. Thanks to the scholarship from Campus France, I got some financial support last year and able to survive in Paris until now. Before going to the Goblin, I didn't expect there's a big change in my life. However, this school has a different way of teaching that I've never experienced before. They focus more on individual tutorials, so you will be able to receive specific feedback every week. This way of learning shows me a lot. We can discuss the design problem and find the solution with the tutors based on our own project. It's more specific and understandable. I improved in a faster way that I didn't think. Moreover, I met many international classmates and we shared different cultures, visions, and cuisines. All of them are very passionate, mature, and talented. Their attitudes inspired me to work harder and spend more time to enjoy life, which is a good way of getting inspiration. I have a lot of good time studying with them too. We also learned to collaborate through the project. It's very useful because film making always requires teamwork. I didn't like working in a group before, but now I appreciate it a lot. I believe having more people to work and help will make a better film that we couldn't achieve in a one man band. Here are some of the projects I did during the first year study. We were given a lot of freedom to speak for ourselves through our own work and try different things in all the modules. We have many interesting classes like writing games, 48 hours animation jams with the classmates and some trainings. The schedule was really tight, but it was a fruitful year. During the summer, I also helped the senior to finish their graduation films as an internship. The films are called Goodbye Robin and La Bessia. If you haven't watched it, you can check them out in our school YouTube channel. Some of the graduation films are nominated in some big festivals like the Oscar, any awards, and any Fantasy International Animation Festival. 
Even though these films are not directed by the studio, I could still see the good and bad side by the, um, from the people made during the production and avoid making the same mistakes. Apart from the study, I enjoyed the life living in Paris too. There's a lot of museum events and beautiful fields in France that I could go with friends. Sometimes we just sit next to the river after class. We talk about art, industry in our countries and life. We always go out to sketch together and discover interesting places during our leisure time. Since we all left our hometown alone to study in Paris, we got some comfort from each other by forming a small artist community. We speak in different languages. Even though my English and French aren't that good, I couldn't express myself sometimes. It doesn't bother us. We can still share our thoughts and laugh together. As a student, we always ask, what can we do after graduation? Our school has a lot of connection with big companies, to name a few, Netflix, Illumination, and La Cachette. I'm sure most of you have heard or even watched the film, like Minions and some original anime produced by the Netflix. Some of the graduates are working there too. The school is using a private recruitment website to make sure they help the students to find jobs. A certain amount of work will be offered to the Goblin students too. No matter if you want to go back to Hong Kong or stay here to gain more experiences, the school will also try to help. It's always tough to leave our comfort zone to go to a stranger place alone, but I'm happy that I decided to come out and discover new things. I still remember the time I got the offer and I struggled for a half month that should I accept it or not. Luckily, I made the right decision. It's ready to take an adventure in your life by studying in France. So you know you don't have any limitation to grow and learn. Thanks again to the scholarship from Canvas France. Without the financial support, I couldn't have the chance to start achieving my dream. Hope you all have the courage to be a better artist and designer. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much, Sally. Um, thank you so much for staying with us. So now we come to the panel discussion uh, session. So uh, the first question is uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, global competitiveness. Um, because we are living in such a globalized world and uh, uh, all of the students, when they try to choose school, they will consider uh, different countries and they will consider different culture and the different uh, uh, disciplines they want to study. But also they will consider, consider the uh, 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 global competitiveness. So uh, the qu uh, first question is uh, how, what, what is your strategy to ensure uh, a high uh, global competitiveness? Can I ask uh, Peter first about this question? Yes, um, I, th I think uh, a few things I want to talk about um, briefly. We know that in Hong Kong, we have changed quite a lot in the last 20 years from being a, a sort of much more industry oriented thing towards the creative sector. And this is official policy, but also our school wants to become really a leader in these types of things. So we need to really train our students to become at least in the undergraduate program, but also in postgraduate education to become uh, leaders and innovators in this field. Secondly, uh, within this whole region, it is one of the most exciting areas for uh, not just Hong Kong, but Guangdong and Shenzhen. It's really becoming one of the most important areas for uh, innovative technology and digital technology and transformation. And this happens on many, many levels. So we need to be able to uh, um, get students who are very, very passionate about that, make sure that we, we teach them necessary basic skills and also creative ability so they can become future leaders in these different sectors. Great. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Cleo Pacha, uh, so how's the situation in 3IS? 
yes, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question one more time, please? Uh, yeah, the question is uh, how to uh, maintain a high global competence. Um, you know, it's, uh, the world is changing so much and uh, it's really highly uh, globalized. Uh, so uh, to, uh, you know, to attract the students and to ensure uh, our graduates can be uh, competitive in the, in the market and, uh, uh, you know, to ensure uh, a high uh, uh, competence in the, in the school is quite important. So I, I'm just wondering, uh, is there any uh, strategy, uh, any uh, uh, philosophy in the as in terms of uh, uh, global competence? Yes, definitely. And this is definitely um, an important part of our development strategy over the next few years. And this is the reason actually why we're developing new English programs, because the idea is exactly that, to attract um, more international students, eventually more international professors. Because again, in all of these fields, one thing that is very important is um, working as a team. And um, the idea of being able to sit in a classroom and have the point of view of people coming from all over the world is very important for us. Um, it creates a very um, unique cultural dynamic in which everyone can learn from each other. So that's definitely something that's very important for us now and also in the future. Mm, great, thank you. Uh, so here we have a question to Sally. Uh, could you share your uh, most memorable moments at the and, and the working environment during your Disney internship program? Um, yeah, <laughs> I think the most memorable me um, moment is uh, because I don't play roller uh, like coaster. I, I, I'm afraid of playing this kind of thing, but because when you're doing the designer at the theme park, you need to experience how the a player will get the feeling. So we need to, what, one time I still remember, we need to go to the behind the scenes of a roller coaster and we need to see the structure and see how all the things work. Wow. And like even the lighting and like flashing special effect you see in the roller coaster, during the, um, the designer need to um, play, need to sit on the train and play that for many, many times to make sure the lighting and other stuff are good enough and people can get the best experience in the theme park. So that is my most uh, memorable moment because I, I was forced, but I tried to do um, face something, encounter something I'm not good at or I really afraid. So I really appreciate that chance that helped me to um, come over the, this difficulty. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Sally. Uh, so we come back to, to Peter. Um, you know, it's uh, some experience, Sally. It's, uh, is uh, highly interesting uh, through her study uh, in France. Uh, in Hong Kong, uh, as, uh, as Pauli Yu, of, uh, of course, is a, a very well reputable school. So um, do you have any uh, development plan uh, in the future? And what will be the future direction of uh, Pauli Yu School of Design? Yes, um, we are currently revising our whole curriculum to uh, better prepare students for kind of digital integrated future. Um, we're doing this in a number of ways, but for instance, we make a compulsory that students understand some basic principles of AI, as well as teaching certain kind of things such as digital uh, literacy and the ability to work in a cross-disciplinary way, which is very, very important as Cleopatra just pointed out in their school. We, wanna, we want students to be able to not just design uh, in a singular way, you know, one product, one outcome, but to be able to work in, you know, cr quite different, across quite different knowledge fields with different groups of people. So we're really trying to look at the curriculum in a way, or the way we run our teaching programs and research programs in a way that foster this kind of cross collaboration. As well as that, then we're also looking at how we can integrate that much better with uh, innovative industry partners outside the school as well. So, so then students such as Sally could then work, for instance, with Disney here in, in this type of way as well. Oh, great. 
Thank you, Peter. So uh, here's a question to uh, Claire Parcher. Um, what importance do creativity, uh, interpersonal, and the intercultural skills hold in the industry? Um, well, yes, creativity, um, that, that's the heart of this industry. Um, being passionate about um, your work is, 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 is key to being successful in this industry. So that's very important. And um, I think um, from the moment um, you're passionate about this subject, you'll be successful in whatever field you, you decide to pursue. Sally, um, uh, as you um, consider as uh, highly successful uh, students uh, learning in France, uh, can you give advice? Um, what can students do uh, to best direct their prof professional development during their uh, study overseas and prepare themselves for su success in the field? Uh, sorry, do you mean like before going to the overseas or when they are able to stay in overseas to study? Uh, yeah, they are maybe planning and uh, or, or, or studying uh, uh, in overseas already. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any suggestions and comments? You know how uh, how can they best direct their professional development? Okay, I will suggest two things. One thing is to um, to open, like to be open like see more things, get more inspiration, no matter what kinds of or which area you are doing for the creation. Even you are doing animation or film, you can still look at some other stuff like fashions and like theme park design or other stuff that those are the things you can get this inspiration that you need in your life and in your works that can help you to speak better and show more personality and character of yourself. The second thing is to approach to approach more people and ask their feedback like because when you're doing your artwork you don't know how other people think like especially you are doing the film um you think your story is the best but other people may think they don't understand at all so you need to ask more opinion and feedback on your portfolio or your films that you can get a better feedback and know what you can improve so you can grow faster and to build a better um, portfolio or artwork and i believe you will earn a lot during this process too Great, thank you, Sally. Um, One we'll talk about portfolio. Here's a question for you, Claire Parcher. Uh, it's about the. Um, um, uh, do you have any advice on the portfolio uh, portfolio preparation? Uh, Would you consider uh, a great A portfolio uh, apart from uh, our portfolios? What do you suggest us to prepare before attending interviews as well? Uh, do you have any suggestion for this? Yeah. Yes, so um, in fact, the, the portfolios um, at our school are not mandatory, but they're definitely recommended and appreciated. And again, at the end of the day, the most important thing is when we have a candidate for um, one of our programs, the most important thing is seeing how motivated the student is, um, not only to join our program, but also about this field and eventually to become successful in this field. So the portfolio can be anything. Um, it doesn't have to be something specific, but just the, the fact that um, the passion about this industry or about their interests um, comes across through their mm -hmm. portfolio. That's the most important thing. Okay. And the, the options are limitless because again, we're talking about creative industries. So it's not something that has to respect a particular format or anything like that. It's really the idea that um, whoever um, sees your portfolio, that they really can see how motivated and how passionate you are about um, this industry. Okay, great. Um, may I ask, um, uh, do you have an interview uh, at, at your school? One student try to apply for your school. Uh, e yeah, if you do, uh, do you have any suggestions for the interview process? Uh, yes, we do have an interview um, that, that's part of the admissions process. So um, the idea is, first of all, to um, meet the student, um, understand why they're interested in our program, understand what their future career goals are, and also um, just have a background, um, more information about what interests them about this field, when did they become interested, maybe, for example, who is their favorite um, movie director, what is their favorite kind of films, to really understand um, their interest in this field, and um, eventually, um, how they want to use their studies eventually to um, to work in this field and be successful. Okay, great, thank you. Um, in terms of um, 
uh, teaching, uh, student learning experience. And a lot of schools, uh, they provide uh, additional uh, experience for uh, teaching and for learning at the, at the school. So uh, at, uh, at the School of Design, Hong Kong Poly U, um, I believe uh, design as a highly applied field. And uh, do, do you have any uh, strategy uh, to work with the industry? How do you think about the relationships with the, with the industry? Well, we try to involve as many industry people in our programs. This is also sometimes as teachers, they, they come in from the industry, they maybe give us one or two days of their time. And then they teach uh, skills that are also relevant both for student education, but also for industry, as well as full-time uh, um, teachers and academics. But maybe most important for our school is the, the studio culture within that, which is, for most students, uh, is the kind of hub or the connection point where all of their skills, their friendships, their sense of community comes together. There are other courses, of course, so it's definitely skills, history and theory and other imports from industry through lectures that students need. But I think it really, in a way, it's the, the kind of uh, studio culture that is actually one of the strengths of our school and the way that students can integrate, um, sometimes even not just because their professor says, but because they look at what their friends are doing and then learn from a group of peers around them who are doing the same thing. And hopefully if they're working later on in a, a really fantastic design practice, you know, they have the similar kind of culture of, of sharing and cross-fertilization that happens. Um, the audience also quite interested in the uh, uh, um, uh, alumni. Um, so I'm just wondering, um, do you have any uh, uh, famous alumni, <laughs> famous is really weird word, but uh, any memorable alumni in your mind uh, y you want to share with, uh, with us? Uh, uh, Cleopatra? <laughs> yes, so um, I don't have a name off the top of my head. I'm sorry, I can um, <laughs> maybe mention that at a later time. Um, but one thing that we're very proud about is that 87% um, 80, of our graduates um, find employment upon mm. graduation. And we have alumni living all over the world. Um, so whether it's living um, in France, living in the US, living in Canada, living in Asia, and they're really quite successful. And um, even to this day, a lot of times, sometimes we'll even have workshops um, with people involved in the field. Um, a few weeks ago, actually, we had a workshop, a masterclass offered by um, Olivier Megaton. He was the one who made the film um, Colombiana, for example. So we have people who are successful working in Hollywood, mm. um, working in animation, working in different companies such as Ubisoft, um, et cetera. So um, our alumni, we're, very, we're really very proud of them. Great. Uh, how about the situation of uh, Poly U? Um, yes, uh, well, some of them I mentioned very, very briefly or showed briefly in my presentation. But as well, I mean, we have a very long history, including uh, well-known filmmakers such as Wong Kar Wai and uh, many other local or regional uh, famous people, uh, including as well designers who've gone on to work for Porsche and, you know, European car companies, etc., etc. So we cover quite a wide range of these things. Um, there is more information available on our website, I believe. So please do have a look at that. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much. Um, so I would like to take the last question and um, uh, or any comments or any suggestion you want to share with the, with the audience. Uh, uh, Sally, um, do you have a, f a final word or messages you want to uh, share with the uh, uh, coming students and who are interested in studying at France? Um, I think the biggest like suggestion I have, like I have said, is to don't don't be scared to take the adventure and step out of your comfort zone because the world is changing every second and you need to like get more things from the world and to um, increase your like ability or your vision. So just be brave. Yes, that's okay. it. 
Great. Uh, Cleopatra, um, do you have a messages for coming interactive uh, media students or animation students? Uh, yes, we would definitely be happy to welcome you to our campus, uh, wel uh, ready to welcome you as a student at our school. Um, all of you are the future um, producers. Um, <laughs> you will become the future producers um, over the next few years, so we would definitely um, be glad to help you in this process. Um, so we would be happy to welcome you at uh, Twa ES International Institute for Image and Sound. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Claire Pacher. So any final message, Peter? Um, um, no, I just really want to, I really like Sally's comment that you should actually push the boundaries and explore. I think all of the wonderful design students that passed through here, you know, the most successful of them really were exploring, pushing, questioning and finding out new directions for design. So I, re I really think that's something that is a very, very good message. And we will try to help you if you come to School of Design, we'll try to help you in that journey. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's, uh, I just want to summary that um, design education, uh, including interactive media and animation uh, is a very unique field. And uh, we care about the culture, we care about the social moves, uh, we care about the industry needs, and we care about uh, human um, users, uh, what do they really need. So we're actually uh, acting as a kind of a bridge um, or um, uh, media uh, between technology with the social needs and the social movements. So um, if you are uh, actually uh, interested in design or interactive media or animation uh, as a broad concept of art and design, uh, please contact us. Um, France, uh, the schools we introduced today and Hong Kong Poly U will be uh, probably uh, the options for you and you should uh, consider first. <laughs> okay, so that's all the thing for today we want to uh, discuss and uh, thank you very much for st still uh, staying with us and uh, we'll see you next year. Thank you very much.